Some of my close family and friends uh, will know that, as well as brass instruments, I particularly enjoy the pipe organ. Uh, it's an instrument that I admire because of its sound, but also because of the engineering that goes into uh, creating one of them. They're a massive feat of design, of engineering, of planning, and once you've got it all assembled, you get to enjoy the sound that one of those instruments makes. Um, for a period of time, I actually had my own pipe organ in my garage, and I'm going to display a couple of pictures uh, around my head of what that pipe organ looked like. Unfortunately, a garage is not the most appropriate uh, place to have an organ set up. Um, you've got atmospheric variations that adjust the tuning on the pipes frequently, which is uh, a headache. Um, and you've also got the room factor. I mean, my garage isn't exactly small. I could fit, it's, it's a single garage plus workshop. Um, so it's, it's got a reasonable footprint, but I just can't simply, couldn't simply fit the, the eight, seven or eight rank organ in here and have it in a condition where I had enough room to maintain it. So unfortunately, I haven't had an organ set up for a while. So since, uh, since that organ got packed away into storage, I haven't really had the, uh, the opportunity to enjoy either the sound or the mechanics of having a pipe organ available to me. What I've recently done is acquire for a dollar an old Rogers uh, analog organ console. Now this is uh, a pipe organ console, but instead of it interfacing with real pipes, it has a massive bank of circuitry which generates analog tone signals which get fed through an amplifier and out speakers. Think of it as a keyboard, but it looks like a pipe organ console. Unfortunately, the sounds were just pants. They were just awful. So um, thanks to a, an incredibly clever friend of mine, um, I'm actually going through the process of ripping out all the old analog circuitry and stuffing it full of digital circuitry. That means that instead of relying on uh, old analog circuitry, which was quite flaky, um, I get to rely on computer sounds, actual sampled pipe organ sounds. It won't look like a pipe organ, well the console will, but I won't have the experience of having a pipe organ, but I will get the sound of a pipe organ available to me once again. And that is my goal. So what I'm going to be doing over the next wee while is providing periodic updates uh, as to where I am at. The first stage is involved gutting it. Uh, getting rid of the old circuitry and cleaning it up a bit and then the installation of the new circuitry uh, and then some fine tweaking and so forth. This video is part one. I expect there to be maybe two or three additional videos subsequent to this. Um, so I hope you guys enjoy. So the first step of getting the organ console ready is to get rid of all the old analog circuitry and the panels and so forth that are inside the organ. Excuse the darkness, but this is the first panel, the rearmost panel of the organ. We can see all the analog circuitry in here, which is quite interesting. Um, but one thing that I find even more interesting is this really old school reverb panel here. It's just the leads, some springs on a tin can. Quite amusing. But anyway, let's get this one out and see what's behind it. Here's another shot of the back of the organ. We can see these three massive amplifiers here. Uh, well, they look massive to me. I don't know whether they are or not, but because of their age, we're not going to be reusing them. What I'm instead going to do is have a PC mounted to this rear frame, which uh, I've cleaned up. There was a whole lot of circuits, uh, circuit boards on this uh, on the swinging frame, but we're don't, I don't know whether I'm going to keep this or not. I could mount a um, one rack unit wide server on that is, is one of my thoughts. But we spent some time last night getting rid of all the wires. Um, that uh, metallic box in the middle of the shot there, that's um, an external speaker panel. Uh, we've got the uh, Rogers Type 7, I think, power supply down in the corner there. Um, but one thing to note about the circuitry of this organ is that there is a lot of it that was all hodgepodge and bodged together. It was quite common to see additional bits of circuitry that were added sort of as an afterthought. In that corner down there is a Vero board which has got um, some additional electronics on it. And if we look in particular at this circuit board, 
we can see that some of the legs of that chip have been stretched out straight and have extra wires coming off them. Um, I mean, that's clearly not how these circuits are supposed to be built, but that is an example of, uh, and it looks like it's uninsulated wiring as well, but that's just an example of the sort of makeshift way that some of this is built. And that's not an isolated event, because if we go over here, we've got the exact same thing. Uninsulated wires that just connect to random pins, um, instead of being instead of the pins connecting to traces on the on the PCB, it's quite quite bizarre. And you'd see things like individual wires coming off, and the wires have got a resistor mounted in line on them, and so forth. It's really quite hodgepodge some of the way that this this has been put together. But I do like, there is some mathematical satisfaction on seeing large rows of equipment uh, and, and, and circuit components just sitting in like that. Because of course with, with analog tone generators uh, as feature on some of the other circuit boards in this organ, everything, everything has to be done manually. There's no, digital, uh, there's no digital work in this organ. We have massive boards like this, which I believe, I, I don't really know, but I assume they generate the signals um, but this board is so heavy that it can't even really support its own weight. And when you flex it, you can hear all the uh, handmade traces at the back. You can hear them all flexing as well. And if uh, and if there's any, I mean, you can actually see some of the corrosion of the metal there. Um, but anywhere that there are wires soldered to it, soldered to these traces, um, you pull the wires off, and, and the entire trace comes with it. It's it's really quite poor. This is one of the other cards of the organ. Um, it's got all this enamel coated wiring on it, which is a real nightmare to work with. Um, but each of these cards is just filled of, with banks of resistors, which I believe filter down the, uh, the tones that are generated and reduce them to the right pitch. Um, I'm sure bending these is, is going to break them, but um, it's, we're not reusing any of the circuitry, so it's not particularly... It's not particularly problematic. Now these, these, as you can see by the labels here, there's one of these cards for each individual rank. So there's the 8 foot flute card, the 4 foot flute, 2 and 2 thirds flute, 2 foot flute, 1 and 3 fifths, and 1 and, three, one and 1 third foot flute. And, so the, and, and as I said, they're just filled uh, with banks of resistors, which is quite uh, mathematically satisfying to see big circuitry like this, um, or, or see arrays of circuitry like that. A lot of the organ innards have now been removed, including this uh, top bank of circuitry here. And quite cleverly, uh, this frame pivots so that one can get access to um, the circuitry, which is mounted on this side. These are some of the wires that we're, uh, we're going to recycle and use um, because the new circuit boards are going to sit on this upper frame. So it's um, less likely to be covered in dust. This is an example of one of the new controller boards that have been made up. Sorry, one of the new, well, it's not the controller board, but it's one of the boards. Uh, I have a very clever friend who um, is an electronic engineer, electronics engineer, and he's designed this and built it himself. So this is one of four of these boards which are going to be uh, used in the organ, and there's an additional controller board. So you're going to have two mounted here. Um, we're going to have two mounted here and then the controller board uh, mounted in that frame there. So my job is some of the more, uh, some of the more hands-on stuff of creating the mounting boards and getting the circuitry mounted on them. Uh, he's going to do all the clever electronics because I don't have a clue. And the last thing I'll show in this particular update is this folded line reverberation device by OC Electronics, manufactured by Beautiful Girls in Milton under controlled atmosphere conditions. Um, and all it is, is a tin with some springs in it and a little device there that uh, takes the input or output, threads it through the spring mechanism and then feeds it out that end. Uh, it's quite an interesting way of doing reverb and I understand that's the standard way of achieving it in an analog method, but I find that quite interesting.